Hello and welcome to the York Creators Podcast. My name is Ben Porter and each week you can join me as I chat to someone from the York's creative community. This week's guest is Tom Hyam. Tom is a creative director and producer who works with artists, developers, designers, arts organisations and policy makers all over the world to produce ambitious artworks and creative projects. He is currently creative director of York Mediali, a brand new biennial arts festival which will bring world premiere commissions from leading artists to the city. In this episode we discuss how Tom approached building the festival from the ground up, his advice to aspiring artists and producers, and about the challenges facing York and its future. Tom, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad to be here. So as a curator and a producer, you have the wonderful job of bringing together artists and audiences. How do you choose what kind of job you want to take? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I think um, I once met uh, the guy called John Chusa, who used to run uh, BBC World Service and uh, used to run the Barbican. And I remember asking him, I was maybe like mid-20s at the time, how did you how did you make the decisions that you made in your mm. career that look so logical, like moving on? And he said, um, I only ever made a decision on gut instinct at the time that that decision presented itself to me. I never, like none of that is strategic. Looking back, maybe I can strategize and kind of make sense of it, but i um, really, really, really lucky. I'm super aware of how lucky I am to work in jobs and in, in places and with people where really, if money wasn't a thing, not that getting straight to capitalism and, and <laughs> the, the wider geopolitical landscape, um, if money wasn't a thing, I'd still be interested in working with those people and doing those things anyway in my spare time. And if I can do that and earn a living and pay a mortgage and put food on the table at the same time, then that's the right decision. So, What sort of areas do you find you yourself keep coming back to in terms of the jobs that you're looking at? Um, I guess I've... I started off in film, particularly in film festivals and Northern European film. Prior to that was just volunteering on different festivals and art projects and film projects and music projects that excited me. And um, suddenly realised, I think I was about 22, 23 at the time. And before that, it just hadn't been made a possibility that you could work and earn money doing something that you actually were interested in. I know that sounds really stupid and, and a bit sad, but I think, I think it's probably a slightly more common story than we let on that the way the education system is designed and you're kind of funneled through it and everything's about exams and all this and grades. I'd always thought that work was one thing and what you enjoyed and what you were interested in was something separate, like yeah, post 6pm. Yeah. I went from film towards kind of visual art and and. Um, kind of multidisciplinary art projects and then towards digital art more specifically and got had a really amazing mentor that kind of sucked me into that world and taught me about it so since then I've been messing around in digital art really I think. So York Mediali what is it and why is it a good thing for York? So York Mediali is a major biennial festival of media art that um, is arriving on, on the shores, on the doorsteps and the shores of York on the 27th of September this year till the 6th of October. And it's a 10 day celebration and enormous party of digital art, creative technology, creative business and lots of weird and wonderful things in between. So to cut a very long story very short, it's a, it, it was born out of the York gaining UNESCO designation as a city of media arts in 2014. This UNESCO designation was awarded, like looking forward, saying, you know, we're going to do, we're going to build something really big here and impactful, nationally significant, internationally significant. Development started. So um, this is in basically about two years ago to the day almost, and yeah, just kind of trooping around. I, we didn't, I didn't. There wasn't an organisation, right? I was just doing some a bit of freelance work didn't need an office or a desk or even to sit down at any point really just spent the whole time like half running around the city talking to different people and different partners and kind of trying to tease out what people wanted it to be what people thought it could be what expectations what preconceptions were and the cultural sector is quite evolved here right Mm. so it's um the way I always describe it is like it's a small dense city with a lot of sort of people with a lot of vested interest in things so it's quite a, and, and I remember talking to you really early in that 
Can be difficult to navigate. Yeah, I mean, and there's different levels to things. And and talking to, I, I knew I'd get controversial, so I'm going to get controversial quite fast. <laughs> talking to like the real creative community and the real artistic community was something that I was really keen to do. But it was always, it it was never acknowledged as something that was needed to do by the people that employed me necessarily. So I had to do the sort of political conversations a little bit, small p political. And then actually try and unpick in between, in between those communities and those institutions, who and what was going on and why, and what the frustrations and opportunities and talents and and gaps and all, all these kind of things, which has definitely been a sort of the bigger job, but also the the bit of the the program that I'm more proud of is how hopefully the proof will be in the pudding, right at the end of September, early October, but how many different artists and creative are engaged and how many kind of non-obvious options and and projects there are and the balance between national and international artists and local and regional and hyper local you know it's it's quite a tricky challenge and a balance but um it's coming and we'll see how it goes yeah i'm gonna ask you about projects in a second yeah when you're in that process where you're kind of coming to york discovering things what surprised you about york york as a city is just so picture book beautiful right and and you very quickly and even me not living here day in day out for years and years i i'm already a little bit numb to it which is very easy to get to but i think part of that beauty and kind of on the face of it privilege in a lot of ways is a challenge for york's creative community it's definitely been a challenge for us in terms of fundraising because um despite all the kind of stats and reports and you know writing about inequality and and the kind of the gap between the one percent and the 99 percent in your um you arrive here it doesn't look or feel like it needs that much help Mm. and so that's that's a challenge because i think for not just for fundraising but for artists and creatives like yourself trying to find space like the space we're sitting in right to 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 get permission and investment and buy-in from a developer or a retailer or somebody to go oh yeah well well, let's let's write off a bit of earnings on this asset for a little while because we can see in the longer term what the benefit of that would be because of how privileged and the tourist economy in york it's kind of makes everything a little bit transactional a little bit short term yeah there are probably way better examples um that I haven't seen, but I always liken it a little bit to Krakow in Poland. And obviously it's a very different city, but it's a beautiful historic city that I visited in 2000 and 2001, I think. And it was a stag do and hen do, vodka based, boozy, paintball y type. That was the tourist economy, right? Went back there in about 2014. And while I'm sure that's still there, it's now in that part of Eastern Europe, certainly one of the most kind of invested in a high growth kind of creative and tech and young business environments. And, and it's thriving. It's totally thriving. You know, it's, it's gone from sort of a little bit sketchy to, and I don't, I'm not saying that this is a wholeheartedly a good thing, (laughs) but it's gone from a little bit sketchy to like super hipster. And I, I know that sounds really cliched of like, you want to bring hipsterism to York, but I think what I'd love to be able to do is try and offset the, um, create a reason for people like you who want to start something, do something, have an itch to be creative. The media is here to try and create a reason for them to stay or try and help create a reason for them to stay. Imagine if there was five or six like really interesting, I mean, there already are obviously five or six, but you know, 20, 30, 40 kind of, um, clusters of different kinds of creatives that you dipped in and out of and worked with in different ways that you all kind of um catapulted off each other a little bit and that that kind of ecology is there in pockets but it has felt like in particularly in talking to the bigger institutions it felt like they're so far removed from stimulating and connecting those those pockets of people like yourselves who are like screw it we're going to do something that if they're not doing that what are they here for i mean obviously that's a really um, uh, controversial thing to say, but like the protecting of 
somebody somebody else said to me right who the dominance of heritage is one thing somebody in the heritage world said to me um that they were talking in a heritage forum conversation with quite senior people in york about what is york's future and a genuine perspective that they got back in that conversation was protecting 10,000 years of heritage protecting i mean like could you be any more unambitious mm. than all we want to do is look back carefully and maintain looking back I'm, I'm, okay like i'm not anti heritage but why can you not look forward while also not disrespecting or trampling on or or co-opting yeah I don't know. It just feels like an opportunity that's not clicked unless people are like being quite dynamic about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you know Mike Kenny, the playwright? He mm. did. Yeah. So he had a great phrase. Um, it was after the arts barge got slagged off in the press yeah. and all that kind of thing. Um, a group of us kind of got together to give a response, and he had a great line of like, "York's really good at protecting its dead culture, but a bit rubbish with its live culture." <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I th- like resistance to change and kind of just general skepticism about trying stuff. It's cancer to creativity isn't it because like if you can't try stuff and do something really shit or something really brilliant then you're not ever going to get any better you're just going to homogenize everything um and that's a part of it as well right i i mean there are a number of um really great artists and collectives and companies and communities collecting in your but the quality uh is is too few and too far between i think like for the for the opportunity that the city has had and has with both universities, with some of the institutions that are here, it should be batting at a higher level in terms of the quality of what comes out of it. You know, when you go and see a film and the the it's a really you come out with some friends or whatever. Oh, what do you think of the film? Oh, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was pretty good. That's the cultural barometer. That's the cultural benchmark. I th- I feel like too much in your kind. I really want people to come out of the stuff in the mediality and go. I absolutely hated it <laughs> or I absolutely loved it. I don't really want anything in between. Yeah. And that, I know that's kind of a, a bit childish in a way of how controversial it is, but it's, it's genuine in the sense that I would like a reaction to be provoked, a creative reaction, a negative, a positive, and not be, not be scared or apologetic about people below the line on your press articles moaning or I don't like yeah, it doesn't matter <laughs> no I think that they get so much noise because or they get so much profile because everyone's kind of listening to it so artists how have you gone about booking artists for Mediali? Um so how have we gone about booking artists um, to be totally honest like not to give the party line at all but we've tried to have as many different formats and methodologies for, for different kinds of call outs or approaches or selected you know selected works or building relationships and the only way i've ever really known to run a festival is to work in tandem like in parallel with the institutions and the partners and the environment and the institutions that can help you make something happen while also trying to get a read and build a knowledge as fast as you can about what's going on creatively in a city but i think it's been my job to get out of the way so to try and our opening night for example the exhibition's been curated by facts um from liverpool and the opening night performance has been curated by a dj producer cultural force of nature from london a guy called elijah kushney so i've had literally nothing to do with that um and the the importance of building different kinds of open calls we've worked with the university to try and pair them up with different creative artists and creative companies around the city we've worked with science city and their networks to try and push out calls for local artists work with unesco work with british council it's definitely not been in any sort of quota system but most of our artists are female and a lot of them a significant proportion are non-white which i think is really important in well, in a number of ways, in 2018, in art and technology, and in York. I think it's important that there's a voice that, um, or that there's a an artistic perspective that can share different voices. Yeah, it so, goes back to what we were saying earlier about stories. It's telling a different story to the yeah. one that York's already telling itself so many times over and over. And, and stories we we would never be able to hear unless in a, in a sort of commercial kind of festival, music festival, or a um, TED type environment because it doesn't 
a good example of this is the music program in in the festival this year so the idea there's a few things at play within the music program we wanted to try and make for 10 days york a stop on the leeds manchester leeds newcastle manchester type gigging run because it gets skipped out you know talking to all the promoters who work across the north it gets skipped out and it gets skipped out for a number of reasons partly because it feels very easy for audiences who are into some quite cutting edge electronic musician to get on the train to Leeds of an evening but there's no conception of audiences getting on a train in Leeds to come to York for an evening why is that why could we not switch that round we've got these beautiful incredible venues and this beautiful incredible city why do we not try and change it and try and play to our strengths so um the music program is entirely <laughs> uh but one of our programmers will kill me for saying this but it's entirely unviable as a, as a commercial <laughs> entity the, where you know it's not the, the earning bit i've worked in arts festivals before where they've gone yeah we'll do a music program so we can make some money back like well you can if you put on lady gaga like if you've got 100 grand you can make 105 but if you put on if you put on pearson sound right if pearson sound has an audience he's amazing really kind of it will be totally awesome night at the Crescent. But if you put on Pearson Sound in Manchester, you probably make a couple hundred quid. If you put Pearson Sound on in Leeds, you probably make a hundred quid. Put Pearson Sound on in York, you probably lose a couple hundred quid. But that's what we're here for, right? We're, we're, because we're here to try and um, make the programme a little bit more, or, or the, the offer in York, a little bit more diverse and a little bit more challenging, a little bit more interesting. So... I think there'll be some stuff will will surprise us and we'll you know sold out a few things already or very close to selling out a few things already so i think it's important that we um push the boundaries a little bit almost like if you stretch the boundaries a bit you make more space for everyone after you so as someone in your position what would your recommendation be for young artists or young aspiring producers be um in terms of upping their game get better I'm not an artist myself, so take all of what I say with a total, with more than a pinch of salt, massive healthy dose of scepticism, everything. Um, But working with the artists and studios and stuff that I've worked with over the years, I've got to want it. It, This isn't like, if you go into this um, to make loads of money, probably, if that's your priority, then you're on shaky ground to begin with, I believe, Um, because... I think it's not necessarily uh, that easy to do so. But also, artists work in one of two ways, in my experience. They either try and strip away kind of um, fluff and filter around what is the core of what is important about an idea to them, or they try and have fun in the complexity and lay on things and like read patterns and take patterns from it, minimalist or maximalist kind of approach. I'm I'm a fan of like particularly early career like trying trying to hone kind of what your voice or your tone or what's you and not like really interrogate your kind of subconscious and your influences and stuff and what you what you absorb um and then kind of not regurgitate but and then you put in your own creative work I think it's really important that people have a have something to say to me, it's totally pointless being technically competent if you don't have an idea. So there's a lot of work that's shiny screensavers. And if you look back under the bonnet, you know, behind the scenes, it's very interesting, the interaction and how it's... But there's no, it's not saying anything. It's it's window dressing and, and it's advertising. And that's fine. And that can make a lot of money. But to me, that's not art. And I think the... Not to say you can't have a career and a foot on both of those sides and a lot of people do and they're very interesting individuals but you've got to want to say something or want to share something or want to inquire about something um, that means something more to you than whatever form it is that you explore mm. does that make any sense yeah. i'm just sort you, of... yeah you need that don't you if in those times when things aren't really going right if you're just doing it for the money you'll think oh i'm just gonna go and get a job yeah because that's probably more of guaranteed money but if you if you've got something you really want to say you really want to do and you'll do it regardless of whether you get paid or not that's obviously something really important and if it's important to you it's going to be important to other people and action and doing stuff is the only differentiator ideas are cheap and they're theft and they mean nothing until you do something with them 
Mm. There's so much, there's so many, you've all, you all will know them. You'll be able to reel off 10 in your head as, you, as you're listening to this. But there are so many artists, in inverted commas, um, who moan in different artistic communities and talk about funding and talk about somebody pinching an idea. Do something about it. Do something. Make something. It's the only currency, I think, is being proactive. I'm not talking about like being a workaholic, but I'm talking about showing and trying and sharing, you know. It, it's It's got to be the way. Yeah. You hear it when you go to like an art gallery and someone sees something on the wall and they go, oh, I could have done that. It's like, yeah, but you didn't. That's yeah. why they've got it on the wall. Yeah, exactly. It. <laughs> it's the classic what is contemporary art um, conversation. There was, a, I remember a conversation in, um, it was at the National Theatre in London. It was about 2011. I think it was just after big budget cuts to the Arts Council, like a big, it was like went early in the, the Tory most recent Tory era and it was a it was a big slash to the Arts Council NPO budget it's huge conference loads of people over 50 in suits mainly men mainly bald in this big room and somebody had dropped out of a panel and the whole conference was about oh no what are we going to do our funding's being cut right that was the whole narrative of the whole day and somebody had dropped out of a panel and um, a young theatre producer stood up like stood up in place to to take this place on the panel and had written this kind of monologue that just absolutely shamed all of them like totally took them to town of the the kind of sitting there going oh woe is us nobody owes you anything nobody like you're not you don't have a divine right to a job in the arts like those days are gone you have to be quite entrepreneurial you have to be energetic and you have to want to do it obviously there are structural biases and and problems and and unfairnesses all over this place in the system but to to kind of remonstrate about feeling like you're owed a, the world needs your creative output it's just not true sorry <laughs> like mm-hmm. whoever you are um so you've got to you've got to be um energetic to make the space for, for yourself so yeah yeah that's really important particularly for young artists to hear because i remember that coming out of school you were always told that like if you work hard you get a pass you you know mm. you've done well move on to the next thing you get given something else and you succeed by just kind of doing what is asked of you um, and then you leave school and people aren't asking you to do things anymore so you sort of think oh well if i do this thing then people are going to respond but they don't no. like unless you're actually going after it and saying like here's this thing here's this thing and getting feedback and you know pulling yourself up just making stuff and just kind of being like, oh, well, people are going to pay me now. It's not going to happen. And, and coming back to the thing we were talking about, York, about not being afraid to like experiment or to take risks. Of like, I have done some utter shit. Like, <laughs> absolute. I'm, like, you've got to be able to go, um, not have the sort of belief and privilege, but just kind of take some risks with yourself as well. Like, whether you're a producer or an artist or a maker or a a creative of, of any sort I think you've got to push if you don't push then you'll just you'll get a bit stale and you'll get a bit kind of safe and then your work won't be as interesting and you won't push forward so what are your plans after the festival and will you be staying on as director every two years or well yeah I hope so that depends um, how well you do <laughs> yeah it's kind of a little bit of that um, we shall see how how things land we've got basically the festival's kind of um, we'll hustling and working as hard as we can me and particularly Rach who's the amazing amazing festival manager who basically runs it yeah we're we're working as hard as we can to try and secure the longer term future of it um and also to try and it's been really hard to establish what everyone wants from it and what everyone sees it's as its potential in a in a vacuum with it not having existed but now at least we've announced most of the program and then we're about to do it so at least then we've got a thing to go what did or didn't work for you and your priorities and you know for partners and institutions and for the for the creative community of york so hopefully um if it lands well (laughs) if more than 51 percent of people loved it rather than absolutely hated it then um things looking good but we're trying to secure the longer term financial future which would mean a 2020 festival we hope praying and hoping crossing our fingers that we'll be able to announce um the dates for 2020 in the 2018 festival that's our target so um to be able to just 
be sure that it's not a one-off fly-by-night kind of hit to day gone tomorrow festival that's yeah. the plan so if people want to find the program and find out what's on where do they go they go to yorkmediale.com um mediale is m-e-d-i-a-l-e and the print brochure will be everywhere hopefully all around you in york um from the very beginning of september and there's tons of stuff on all our social feeds so instagram facebook twitter um I, we might even be on snapchat i don't know well, okay. i don't understand <laughs> i don't understand how it works but we might even be on there um cool. i can put links to everything in the description cool um but yeah just just um just have a look on our website sign up to the mailing list and um, you get to hear first about what's happening for listeners to the podcast we'll do a um like a special uh, discount code for tickets as well that oh, people great. want to sign up to so thank you um that we'll get that included in the notes and stuff Cool, cheers. And if anybody wants to get in touch with you, ask you questions, do you have for them to do that? Please do, yeah, yeah. Um, don't troll me on Twitter, or if, <laughs> if you do, I'll just block you. So fine, crack on. Um, and otherwise, uh, yeah, please do get in yeah, touch. Genuine questions. Um, genuine questions, ideally. And um, yeah, literally, like, particularly young artists trying to make a way in York, this festival is here to try and make it viable for you to stay in this city. Seriously, that's pretty much the only reason we're here forget all the rest of the politics um, and get in touch with me on Twitter or email or something like that. Yeah, you've um, got your own website, which has a link, doesn't it? So I can always link that. I do website as well. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks for being on the podcast. Pleasure. Thank you very much, Ben.